Okay. And uh, once a year, this ritual of coming and meeting the Rotarians uh, and uh, talking to you about where your money goes in terms of the program that's happening in Chennai Girls gives me immense pleasure. So thank you very much for inviting me. And um, I just wanted to start by asking you a few questions in terms of uh, when you say, when we hear this word counseling so often and you hear it from me and you know, you speak among yourselves. What, what does this really mean? I mean, what happens? I just changed my track of speaking when I was speaking uh, to a Sir here a few minutes ago because he was asking me about counselling. So I was just thinking that maybe, you know, I would just like to know what is it, when you say counselling, what are you thinking? What is going on in your mind? Guidance. Understanding a child's mind and problems of the child. Okay. Unsaid, unspoken. Okay. It's yes. helping yes. others to help themselves. Yes, it's this exactly what he said. It's very important to know this. Because, see, the this world freely advises people. We are not short of people who can tell us what to do. Isn't it? If you share a problem, say uh, I, I'm saying that I, I don't know how to come here. Somebody will tell me how to come here. If I say I, I don't know uh, what to do about this issue, there is somebody who is going to give me advice. And this advice can keep coming from all quarters. But when it comes to counselling, when we talk about counselling, it's the actual opposite of advice. Okay, so no matter how old a person is, see in my private practice, I see uh, clients from three year olds. So from three, four, five, I'm seeing different ages. I see up to 65 or 70, 70 years nearly. Some senior people also come to me for help. But what I'm saying is every single person has issues that is based on their age, their experience, what is going on in their life at that time. So my job is mainly to listen and ask questions to enable this individual who is with me to think about their problems in ways that they have not thought about and thereby find the solution themselves. I might know what how, uh, how this problem needs to be sorted out. In fact, the other person may sometimes know because they've heard it from somebody else. But the idea is to get that person to think about it and come up with their own solution in a way that they have processed it and they're coming up with a solution. So that's the technique. So it involves a lot of skills to actually step back and look at that issue like how that person is viewing it. So that's the whole uh, skill and technique that is used. See, and, and some of the skills that we study is about being silent in times that you have to be silent. So listening is more than 70 or 75 percent of my time. So I have to listen to what this person is saying. And listening can be done in several ways. Listening is not just by what the person is telling me as in verbal because the content may be something but I may be picking or I may be hearing something else from the person by the way they are saying it. So the listening is so important in terms of what am I actually picking up? What is this person actually trying to communicate? Or what is this person not telling me? Okay, so that's where I have to have my my abilities and my skills honed to try and figure out what is it the person is not telling me or the, what is it that is so difficult for the person or so uncomfortable for that person even to bring it up. So then if I ask a question about it, you know you in passing you said this to me earlier, can you tell me a little more about this? Then I've really hit the nail on the head. When the person says, yeah, actually, that's difficult to talk about. Or, I'd rather you not ask me this question. 
So then I, if, if a person responds, many times people, if I've really touched a very sensitive subject, that's how the response would be. I'd rather not talk about it or it's too difficult or too painful to talk. So I'll say, okay, you can tell me when you're ready. But just that acknowledgement is enough for the person to tell me what it is. Because I'm not saying you have to tell me. I'm saying you tell me when you're ready. Invariably, the next second they're telling me about it. So the whole idea is to enable a person to speak and to talk comfortably and to very important things that I actually contract with a person, which all counselors do, which is that every single thing that is spoken is in conf confidentiality. What we say that it will not leave this room. We don't. We are not going to repeat this outside. We have very strict rules on when we breach the confidentiality. So that is basic. The first thing that we breach confidentiality is when the person is likely to harm themselves. So that is why suicide, any thoughts about suicide, planning about suicide, all becomes uh, an important issue that we bring it up and we tell. And in this case, particularly in uh, Chennai girls or wherever our counsellors are, that they will inform the school authority. It is mandated for us to inform and to inform the family that there is this person who is thinking about this activity. So that people around know that this is something that this, this uh, child is struggling with. Or if it's an adult also, this adult is struggling with this issue and they need to know about this. So, Breach of confidentiality under in, in case of personal harm, self-harm and the other breach of confidentiality is when the person is likely to harm another person. If we know that there is a, this person is potentially a person who could harm another person, then I have to inform. Otherwise, we basically don't tell anyone about whatever issue the person is coming and discussing with us. So typically our reports whichever school, whichever college, wherever we are, typically a school report will be as vague as possible because a school report goes through many hands. There are many people who will have access to that. So we do not, so it will say something like, uh, say Sumati, I am giving an example, Sumati. Sumati, next to it, on a regular sheet will just say family problem. Okay. So now you don't know what exactly the problem is. Now Sumati may be having an alcoholic father, may be having a stepfather who's, uh, who is, you know, they're having a lot of maybe fights and a lot of things happening. Or, you know, so we don't get into what exactly this child is going through because, simply because we want to protect this child. Okay, so general school reports when it is going through different places and we know is going through different places will not have detailed information about each child but the, the place where detailed information about each child is where we have when a child comes for counseling we start a, 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 a file a case file in that file every single session every single thing that the child is struggling with is recorded there and that file is always kept different files are there the counselor usually manages that and she keeps it in a place which is locked and usually the key for that particular cupboard is one with the counsellor and one with the head of that institution will hold the key. That is in case there is a need when the counsellor is not there to open and uh, take any information regarding a child, say something has happened, there is some crisis that has happened, then you can actually access that. But otherwise the information regarding children are not uh, available for everyone. We keep it uh, confidential. And one of the most important things that we do in uh, counselling is that we basically when I said you know the person has to find a solution for themselves what I'm actually saying is that counselling process or the therapy process itself is what we call an empowering process. The person needs to feel I have the potential and I have the ability to find solutions for myself. So in a way the counsellor's responsibility is to make the person, whoever is coming for counselling, feel that the counsellor has not done anything. You understand? So the work is, 
like you 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 do it in such a way that the person thinks hey, i only found out all this i only have figured out this for myself not the counselor why am i going to see the counselor so the work of the counselor is that that every single point the person feels that they have thought about it they have discovered something for themselves and not that the counselor has helped them so this is a very interesting way of understanding this whole concept of uh, counseling and i also want to tell you something very uh, very uh, maybe even uh, just for you to uh, see in perspective in terms of the kind of support you are giving for uh, chennai girls school today a counselor's fee i don't know how many of you actually have uh, you yourself have gone for counseling or you know somebody who is going for counseling a counselor's fee is anywhere between 1000 to 3000 rupees i'm talking about chennai city okay i'm not talking about anywhere else uh, the counselor's fee is that for an hour 50 minutes to one hour session we charge 1000 to 3000 rupees that is our range if you have a lot of experience i charge 2000 rupees an hour okay and i have people coming I have a lot of people who are coming to me for counseling. The reason I'm telling you this is not to boast, but for you to see in perspective how can we expect children who are coming from disadvantaged backgrounds to access this sort of help? It's just nearly impossible. There are free counseling centers that are there in Chennai as in anywhere else, but these free centers that have counseling. are people who are not trained in counseling they are not trained in counseling so if a girl is going to go there and say you know uh, my uh, step father is and i am having a lot of problem at home and he doesn't love me and he is stopping my mother from uh, doing anything for me this person would probably say tell your mother what to do tell your mother that he is troubling you like this <laughs> tell your mother see this is not what we are saying no counseling is not that counseling is to help this person figure out what she should do or what he should do so this is where the whole difference is you will have a person sitting in a, in a, many of the free counseling centers around in chennai itself are people who are not trained at all they are not professional counselors they are just sitting there saying that they like to help people because people come to talk to them this is a standard line okay people always come and talk to me they tell me their problem so i think i'm a counselor the skill involved is not what the person is talking about they're talking about the fact that many people like to come and talk to them now if you have a person like this sitting they are not going to charge money and none of these children even if you even if you show them where these free centers are many of these children are not going to go and access this sort of support so now just think about the kind of support that these children have been having in chennai girls school honestly these kids are really very fortunate this is the fourth year that they have had a counselor in them in that premises and uh, the counselor goes there twice a week she is not able to finish her work there are so many children who are coming for counseling and the issues range we have uh, children who are having issues with classmates and it's disturbing them we have children who are not able to concentrate on their studies we have children who are talking about uh, boys following them to school and that's disturbing them so much i can't go and tell my family if i tell my parents they'll stop me from going to school so i can't tell my family that uh, i'm having all these boys harass me on my way to school so i'd rather keep quiet suffer the harassment and go to school because i need to finish my education so all of these things we have you know such a range of issues that we are managing and we are working with in 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 the school so it's it's remarkable the work that you are doing i really must congratulate you because it's a remarkable service that you are offering to these children who will just not have access and now very interesting things have happened because you know it also is interesting in a way because the counselor who is employed in chennai girls school she also goes to asan matriculation school so she does two days here and she goes to asan matriculation the other two days so this girl is a, a daughter of a sub inspector so she has no fear about going and going to a police station or talking to a police officer she has just 
because you know she's very she's living in the police quarters in Tamaram. She comes all the way from there. But uh, so we have a very good person in hand in terms of if there are any issues to be dealt with in terms of law, she is able to do that very well. So we have had very you know very bold person who is there and uh, she really handles the issues very well. So we have had very interesting, so when we had this, when we have children with uh, you know severe suicidal ideation and this is not just in Chennai girls school, I must say this because I think in, uh, in Chennai, all over Chennai, in every school, every school in Chennai, we are hearing about children who are suicidal. So this has become a very common issue unfortunately and crime among children has also increased. Crime committed by children has increased. If you see the paper, every day we are seeing issues about children who are committing crime. So, so many things have started to happen and we are in a, in a time and age where there is a lot of, uh, you know, you, you have free access to information. So children are hearing things and are acting or behaving like adults even before they are. So 13 and 14 year olds who are at, who are talking as if they are 20. You know, we see this in our counselling centres. We see this happening to children all over. That they, they talk like as if, you know, they are talking as if they are uh, really uh, mature adult. And then you have to really look at it interestingly because it's a, it's a small child who is sitting in front of you. And she is talking like as if she is managing so many things. And some of the children from the Chennai Girls School are indeed managing a lot of things. They are managing their own homes. Because mothers are working, invariably the mothers are working, fathers are not around because they are also working. So this child invariably is doing a huge amount of cooking, cleaning, taking care of the household work and taking care of siblings before she comes to school. So this is a quite a common thing with, uh, with the Chennai Girls School. And if she's having additional issues, I think almost 50% of the kids in that school, uh, the parents are not living together. So the biological parents have already separated and this child is living with her uh, mother who is married again or the father who is married again. So this is a very complex sort of a situation that most of the kids are coming from. And, uh, and that has its own issues. You know, we are having stepfathers who are molesting the girls. We are having step uh, mothers who are uh, who don't want to care for the child. So if, the, if it's a step mother, she makes her do more work. So this child ends up, uh, you know, doing so much of uh, family work in the house, collecting water. See, there are things that even we tell our children to do. You know, our children may also be doing several things when they were in school. For some of you, if you remember, many things you may have asked them to set, uh, get, uh, uh, help the mother in the kitchen, or uh, to help uh, get dinner ready, or to set the table. We do ask children to do certain things in our homes, and it's very important that we ask them to, so that you know they know that responsibility is shared in the family. But here we are talking about children who are doing re real work that is taking a lot of their time, collecting water, for instance. You know, this is all like, it takes so much time and energy to do this sort of work. So they do this sort of really hard labor. You know, and we have a very strong law in this country about, you know, child labor. We don't want children working below the age of 14. But what are you going to do if they are working in their own homes? We can't stop them. And we can't, uh, we can't, where, where can we take this child and put this child? Where? You know, these are all uh, problems that we are seeing. So we have to help this child and many times we have to call their parents and talk to them and ask them, is there anything that you can do? Can other children help? Can you get uh, someone else to also help you? You know, all of these things that we need to uh, sort out and uh, talk to. So we are having all these uh, things. But one thing that I would like you to think about in terms of future of this program, and uh, this is coming mainly uh, because I am also working with the Banyan on uh, positive mental health. We are talking about positive mental health among school children. So talking about positive mental health is <coughs> crucial because I think even today's paper if you have seen, it says 
that one out of ten Indians today's statistics has mental illness. Mental illness. We are not talking about stress. We are talking about mental illness. One out of every ten Indians are having it today. That means 20 of us are sitting here. Already two of us have uh, some level of mental illness. Needing help. Meaning medication is required. Okay. So why I am saying this is because it is so important for us to understand that we have serious mental health issues all around us and one we are many of us are totally ignorant we don't even understand that the person has mental illness even if the person is uh, getting angry doing uh, weird things we just say oh out of anger this person is reacting we don't understand the person is actually having needs help needs to be taken to a doctor and given treatment we somehow we you know, push it under the carpet. We don't want to see it. We are seeing mental, when, we, when I say mental illness, see, just like physical illness, there are like a billion diseases, correct, physically. Same way there should be, the brain is also an organ. If we are looking at it very rationally, and if we are looking at it without emotion, you would see that the brain is another organ. If liver can have so many diseases, if a kidney can have so many illnesses, the brain should also be having several, no? We don't want to even address this issue. So when I'm talking about mental health, it's a very interesting definition. I don't know if any of you have heard. See, mental health is the ability of a person to be able to cope with changes. Because in your life, any time in our life, something or the other doesn't work the way you want it. You may want to come here by car. When you come, maybe the driver is not standing there. Or maybe the car, uh, there is a puncture. Maybe the traffic light has all turned red. At every signal, it is turning red when you are driving here. These are all issues. On a day-to-day, -day, small things or big things we are facing. But when we face it, the ability that you have to be able to cope with that is mental health. That is being healthy. But if you are not able, everything becomes a problem. You are not able to manage it. You are not able to cope with the fact that every single time I, I every junction I go, the signal is turning red. Maybe this is not the place I should go and you are turning and going home. There is something wrong, isn't it? This is what I am saying. Every little thing, changes that happen, changes that are, life is dynamic. There is continuously going to be things that uh, are thrown at you. But if you are unable to cope with it, then it means that you need help. And I will tell you, all of us, every single one of us, at some point in our life, need this help. So I don't want to, you to think that only some people need help. All of us need help. Is there any of us here who can say, till now, I have never needed to take any external help, I have always been able to manage my issues and problems. We share, we tell our, uh, we tell our neighbor sometimes, we tell our friends sometimes, we meet with someone sometimes, we, we tell our, we share our issues. But sometimes we also know by sharing, we are also worried, isn't it? Because we are giving some vital information about ourselves, we are sharing our vulnerability. And not all places and not every person is safe to share some of your personal things. Say if it's something relating to your property or if it is something relating to your health. You decide who you have to share it with. Because if it is something that is your physical health, you may be worried to share it with your own family because your family members are going to totally get emotional about it, right? So you may not want to share immediately with your family. You may want to talk to another person and ask their perspective. But when I am saying that when we have stress in life, not all the time that we are able to share. We will have some times when we need to talk to another person. And one of the things that I also set up for my own counsellors is that, that they seek help that they go to a person to talk about their personal issues. Because if we are not able to do that, we will never be able to do our work. If I have to work well with my clients, I have to seek help. 
I have to go out and meet another counselor or a therapist myself. And this is mandated in any part of the world except our country. Of course, our country, everything we take it easy. But in the US or if you go to any other country, you will see that every therapist goes for therapy. You have to go. Because you may be carrying something that is your own personal stuff. If something the client is saying is somewhere striking a bell inside, you will be reacting as you. You will not be doing justice and working. It's no more that person's problem. You will be working out your problem through that person. So it's so important that we seek help. So this is why, you know, all of us require, it's very important that all of us require help. It is okay to go and seek help from a, from a third party. It's very important to do that because if you do that with a third person, completely a person who is not connected with you, your issue is going to stay safe and you may likely to find actually quickly come to a solution, quickly come to a resolution of that issue rather than dragging in for a longer time. So these are all things that we need to consider. So when I said positive mental health, what I meant is that we need to not just provide counselling, we need to also do a whole lot of other activities which you do, you know, through Raila you are doing a whole lot of activities there. You, you help children, you give them uh, some information, you give them some uh, ideas on managing, like you may be doing something on leadership or doing something on stress management and all of that. But this is something that we need to do. The counsellor needs to also work on those issues. So it's very important to do things that are related to art. Art as in any form of art. So for positive mental health, this is very important. Art, music, drama, any form of arts is very important. It helps the person maintain a stability. Now, how many of you here do any form of art, like even listening to music uh, or drawing, painting? People here? Nobody listens to music. Right? Music. Yeah? What do you do? What do you do? You listen to music. You also listen to music. Anyone tries to draw, paint? I don't listen to music, I listen to the motivation speeches. I don't like music, that's mm. my field mm. of interest. So I like hearing people, so I listen to all the speakers mm. while uh, doing my driving. Anyone uh, uh, watches uh, dancing or you like to watch dances? You can dance TV. Anybody dances here? Do you do any so form of dancing? Like dance. That's good. So, this is what, it's very, very important to see the connection of positive mental health with art. Because art, any form of art, is a vehicle for us to have this optimum mental health. Okay. So, if, so now, in, in fact, the therapy itself is beginning to change. Uh, we are, which is what I am also dabbling a lot with. Uh, in the past, I think, seven, eight years, we have been doing quite a lot of work. What we are, where we are bringing arts and therapy together, okay? So we bring, what we talk about is expressive arts therapy. So it's uh, using dance, using uh, drama, using drawing, painting, using clay, all of this therapeutically. So it's, it's a very interesting way of bringing art into therapy. So when people create, like for instance, if someone is uh, drawing something, uh, I ask them to talk a little bit about their drawing and they might tell me something about themselves that they never intended to. But when they say, then they say, you know what, this actually brings me to this thing of, you know, this part I didn't tell you but this is thing about me in my life. For instance, there was a, there was a young man, he, uh, he used to come to me regularly for therapy from uh, Vaishnav College, you know, Arumbaka, from there he used to come and uh, he's a college student, second year student and uh, he used to like to draw. So I found that out in the very first session he told me I like to draw. So I said, okay, so the work that I gave him was every day before he went to bed he needed to, uh, he needed to draw. 
there's a there's a technique that I used with him. It's called a scribble drawing. A scribble drawing is very simple. It's like you take a paper and a pen and you just doodle. You know, just do any form of a doodle. And then after you, so you can't take the pen off till you finish. So you just do a whole scribble. And then after like a minute of you doing, you stop. And then you look at the paper all directions. So you look at it this way and see if you can see your image in it. And then I ask them to turn. This direction, do you see an image in it? And then turn again and see an image. What do you see? All four sides. So people come up with various images. So they may, uh, this particular boy was bringing up images of women. It was always a woman, an older woman in every single picture. So in a week he'll bring me at least seven or eight pictures he'll bring me. And in that it will always be a woman frowning, a woman uh, crying, a woman, it was a standard. So now a young man uh, in the age of 20, 22, if he's having drawing something, a senior woman all the time, who is your mind connecting to immediately? Mother. He didn't have a father, he was living with his mother. Mother was, uh, there's no source of income. Mother does so much of work to put him through college. Okay. So, this boy's whole story and his whole life is around this mother. And see, he's on an unconscious level also. He's constantly anxious about the fact that his mother is doing so many things. And these pictures, you know, very, uh, very startling because Every image is this woman who's frowning, who's complaining or who's crying. So you also have an idea of what is the relationship that he's having with his mother, you know. Because he constantly feels like he's not doing enough for her. She's unhappy with him, you know. And the mother is not like that actually. His mother is a very cheerful lady, very, very, very loving. But this is his perception of his mother, that he is not able to make his mother happy. And that's the, that's the struggle that this boy was having. You know, so it was coming out in so many ways. He is not able to concentrate on his uh, education. He is saying, when I sit in college, my mind is immediately going off and I am thinking about something else. I have to literally drag my thoughts and bring it back to class. So, where are your thoughts? Is there any specific thing that you are thinking about? Not really anything specific. It can be just anything that I am thinking about. But then all his images are very clearly talking about his relationship with his mother. So we needed to sort that out. So I needed to get his mother to come for the sessions. And then we needed to work with his mother. Because whatever I do with this boy is not going to help. You know? he, he definitely needs his mother in the sessions. Because it was all about the relationship that he was sharing with her that we needed to work on. And which eventually he discussed and several things came out and I think there was a, some resolution in terms of how he's viewing his mother changed. So this is what I'm saying. Art is a huge source of bringing, expressing what is going on inside and getting that help also as to what they need to get in terms of how whatever that resolution is can be possible in art. We use a lot of storytelling. So when I say positive mental health, this is what I'm saying. Bringing arts in therapy, helping children or adults, whoever we are talking about, reach, access this. Where do they get this sort of, uh, you know, uh, get this, uh, maybe doing uh, some uh, sort of art or learning. You see, in all the schools, every single school that uh, is actually where people, where children pay a lot more money, Know, anything that is a little more expensive. You will see part of the school curriculum itself is dance, music, isn't it? So these children also need to be able to access that. That is what I am saying. We need to be helping children from disadvantaged backgrounds to access any form of art because that is certainly going to help them to some level cope with the issues that they are managing on their own even without coming to the counsellor. When they come to a counsellor, it will be only here, only when they have 
issues that really need some sort of support. Okay. So I just want to stop here and uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity once again and I'm hoping that you continue to support uh, the counseling program in uh, Chennai Girls and hopefully you will take on more schools because I think Chennai uh, Girls School has been the only school that has received the counselor so far. Hopefully you will think about uh, and Rotary at large might think about doing this program in other places as well, in other schools, Chennai schools as well. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any couple of questions? Quick. I have a many. Uh, you know, uh, you spoke about these suicidal tendencies and uh, often 